Welcome back, everyone. This is SiliconANGLE live in San Francisco at the Red Hat Summit. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the scene from the noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with Jeff Kelly, filling in for Dave Vellante, analyst at wikibon.org, lead industry analyst on big data uh, here at the Red Hat Summit talking open source, innovation, and our guest, CUBE alumni, John Kreis, Vice President of Strategic Marketing at Horton Works. John, welcome back. Thanks, John. Good to be here. Thanks, um, Red Hat, obviously, we had a long, great conversation with the CEO, mm -hmm. all the presidents and vice presidents, all the top management. Mm -hmm. They got a spring in their step. Yep. I mean, the, uh, the, the rhetoric that there'll never be a Red Hat of anything mm -hmm. else other than Red Hat is, doesn't certainly doesn't include Red Hat. They're doing well right. and poised, positioned well, pole position for the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, we did talk a little bit about data. Mm -hmm. um, now Hortonworks has a similar approach to Red Hat yeah. in the Hadoop ecosystem. Yes. Some say the Red Hat of Hadoop, yeah. um, which if you look at it, you know, you can say, hey, similar paths. Our models are same, are similar, yes. Yeah, Business models are the mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. um, and the discipline required for mm -hmm. that mm -hmm really is a long game. So I wanted to first ask you, yep. there's a lot of activity in the big data world. Yep. Obviously, uh, Intel made a, a strategic investment in Cloudera mm -hmm. at $4 billion valuation. Mm -hmm. I mean, amazing validation yep. uh, for the big data space. Yep. The, that's big news, that's got everyone's attention. That takes yep. Hadoop to the top of the front page of uh, the business press, the industry press. Mm -hmm. And here at Red Hat, back in the trenches, mm -hmm. where all the work gets done, <laughs> is the open source community. So talk about yeah. the Cloudera news, how that yeah. impacts your business, yeah. and how that relates to some of the things that are going on here at the Red Hat yeah. Summit. Uh, so I think just overall, it's you know it's a good validation of the market in general, right? That uh, that the large vendors continue to invest in the community, much like a lot of the partnerships that we form, the partnership we have with Red Hat and and other uh, major vendors in terms of making sure that they're investing at various levels, whether it's engineering investment or or other. Um, you know, I think that uh, that move was definitely a validation also of the fact of how important it is to have committers to the core of this technology, and really that 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 it's important to be able to drive the next generation of this technology, move it forward for the enterprise. You've got to really be the company that can really innovate on that technology, and that's really what uh, what Cloud. Well, we had we had Doug Fisher on earlier from Intel, mm -hmm. uh, who's a group vice president and you know general manager, and mm -hmm. he was very clear. The, the, this, the Hortonworks is definitely very much a partner of Intel, mm -hmm. um, and you guys have a lot of partnerships. You've been very successful with your partnerships. Um, so, so talk about uh, the ecosystem, and specifically your relationship with Red Hat. Can mm -hmm. you just unpack that for yeah. us, please? So it's, first of all, it's a great partnership. You know, we've been working uh, since last year on OpenStack, integrating OpenStack with Hortonworks Data Platform in order to enable Hadoop to be deployed in, uh, in, in that infrastructure. Um, and then in February, we announced a, a deepening of the relationship. It's indicative of the kinds of relationships that we form with the major uh, software vendors. Um, and there's a particular um, simpatico nature to the way that Red Hat works with communities and the way that we work with communities. In other words, work in open source upstream projects, take and develop and innovate that software, bring it downstream, uh, test and integrate that together, apply and and then interrupt you for a second. That are out there are familiar with open source. What does upstream mean? Yeah, we've upstream. heard that before okay, and yeah. bring that down. Just explain that real quick. Sure, sure. So um, there are open source projects that a, a very broad community of uh, developers are working on. So when I say upstream, I mean I'm working in some Apache project, Apache um, uh, Hadoop might be one of the core, uh, might be Ambari or any one of the other open source Apache projects that somebody is developing and committing code to. Um, that community, there's thousands of developers who are, who are contributing code into that kind of open pool of, of uh, capability. So that's upstream. Ultimately what Hortonworks does is we work uh, in that upstream notion and then uh, curate that down and take the most stable versions of each of those open source projects from the upstream, test and integrate that together, and then apply a, a very detailed and rigorous level of testing and integration on all those, and put it out as a platform. It's critical. Um, I imagine there may be tension at times between the open source community and the different vendors at play mm -hmm. that want to push one, you know, one particular project mm -hmm. or feature over another. Mm -hmm. um, but that's part of your job and it's part of the business model is to, to balance those and Absolutely. package those up. So I'm sure there's a lot of interesting yeah. conversations behind the scenes. They but. do and, and frankly, I mean, it's, it is one of the reasons that those, you know, and, and Red partner with Hortonworks because we guarantee that the changes that they want to get will get committed into core Apache Hadoop. 
We don't hold anything back. We're not looking to lock anybody in uh, a particular version of the platform. We want to make sure it's all out there for everybody to benefit from, which is a very key piece of our strategy. And it's why they want to work with us because they know we've got the committers, we're working with the committees, we know the processes, and they can be assured that enhancements they need will flow into the overall community. So why is, can you expand on that a little bit? Why is that so important to, to the partner organizations? Yeah. That those, that you know, things that are important to them get actually put into the larger, um, you know, the, the core Apache Hadoop versus yeah. if they were to just do kind of on their own and yeah. have a little bit of a fork. Why is that yeah. such, such an important uh, Bec thing? Because they want to know that um, the code that they're working on, the, the investments they're making will be there. And I mean, so effectively they want to know that the changes can get made, can get committed back to the core trunk of the code line, regardless of what project it is. It might be Ambari, it might be Hive, it might mm -hmm. be core Hadoop. Um, they want to know that that code will be there so that you know, 10, 20 years from now, that'll still be there. Like, they don't have to worry about wh what's going to happen with Hortonworks or the overall community or how things will shift. That code and their investments are safe and secure. Okay. Um, so and that goes for the enterprises as well, just to, just sure. to be clear. Well, absolutely. I mean, they, they, they don't want to invest necessarily in a platform that's right. going to not be around, not be supported. Right. Um, you know, exactly. If, the ecosystem's going to change, there's going to be exactly. all sorts of developments from on the vendors, so yeah. they're basically trying to Future proof. Yeah, de risk. Their investment. It's exactly, yeah. they're de risking their investment. Right, which you know, obviously makes makes a lot of sense. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Red Hat, mm -hmm. your, your uh, yep. relationship. I know you've got kind of an integration on the storage layer, but what's mm -hmm. interesting to yep. me, in addition to that, is the on the on the JBoss part of yep. it, uh, yep. enabling application developers. Because mm -hmm. we always hear, hey, we're all the big data applications. Right. Uh, talk about how that partnership uh, hopefully is going to enable more application development. Yeah, so, and I don't think we've had a chance to talk since we announced in February. Um, our kind of broadened engineering initiative to bring Hadoop to the open hybrid cloud. But that's really where we you know, really just started to get a very strategic, I'll call it, in terms of how we want to enable new kinds of analytic applications to run on a, a more of a complete platform approach. Everything from, as you said, the storage layer all the way through to you know, what is a really super broad um, application deployment model through JBoss. So integration at the complete stack of you know, Hadoop into both storage up into, into JBoss, and then of course into OpenStack for that deployment, mo deployment model gives enterprises and enterprise developers more flexibility and freedom to have kind of an open way to adopt and develop on these tools. And so what we just announced yesterday was an extension of that to OpenShift, right? To giving the platform as a service capabilities and make sure that Hadoop is, integrates deeply within that infrastructure as well. So it's just a furthering or a deepening of a relationship that really is already starting to bear fruit if um, anybody wanted to see demonstrations of what some of that capabilities are. We've been showing it down in our booth and in some of the sessions here. Let's talk about the fruit that might be coming on the tree or bearing fruit, because mm -hmm. it's really early. We asked every guest, certainly the senior and the geeks that were mm -hmm. here, about, um, something that we've been putting forth as our vision, and that is data first. Mm -hmm. You got mobile first, we've been there, done that, yep. now you hear cloud first, which yeah. is all the cloud wars. Right. And now what we're coming on around the next corner is data first, yeah. which is, hasn't really hit the mainstream yet, um, so the folks seeing this is kind of fresh, kind of out in the bleeding edge. Mm -hmm. um, it's coming, where developers are acting on data mm -hmm. as a resource, um, and, and the systems guys aren't used to dealing with data. They look at data as just a storage subsystem or something related to storage, but now we're seeing that. So I ask everyone the question, where does data first fit into the architecture? Yeah. So I want to ask you what you think, one, about data first as a core component of the, of the architecture, mm -hmm. and two, as you talk to customers and partners, what are, they, what are you hearing? Where do, they, where do you see that data layer sitting? Mm -hmm. How does it going to fit in? Does it yeah. fit in nicely? Is it composite, modular? What are you hearing? Yeah, um, and actually it's, it's interesting that you, you bring up that meme because I think you know, we've been saying it wasn't Hadoop that disrupted the data center, it's the data that disrupted the data center. And it's really the realization that these organizations can now and, and want to capture new kinds of data and exploit that for new kinds of applications that they simply couldn't technologically or financially before. And so that's what Hadoop is enabling, and, and Hadoop is kind of a data-first architecture, right? It's from, from many different kind of ideas in, term, in terms of concepts. The idea that I can just land any data into the platform without doing any pre-processing on it whatsoever. Um, the idea that I can apply multi, or land multiple different kinds of data, not just one single kind, but video and log files, and machine generated data, and, and, and you know, blogs and tweets and whatever I have, I can land it into this giant 
pool of, uh, of storage in the, in the Hadoop distributed file system and then begin to process and iterate on it and you know, as I, I heard somebody say, torture the data until it <laughs> reveals its value. Um, it's really what you can do in terms of you know, getting the, the value out of the data. So I think Hadoop is kind of that and would enable that data first kind of mindset. Let me just capture it and then figure out what the value is over time mm -hmm. and that, that could emerge that there is tremendous value or it might emerge that there's none but at least I can get it to do what something What specific conversations are you having with the said, so, hey, I see it fitting here. Mm -hmm. What use cases are popping out now as early, as early uh, yep. use cases of the first generation? Yeah, yeah. So many. I think it's, uh, you know, we see use cases across, firstly I'll just say, really almost every industry, if not every industry, I mean, whether it's manufacturing, oil and gas, you know, you guys have heard this before I know, and maybe some of your audience has as well, but but the, the, the use case is broad, and what we always tell organizations to do is start with a single use case, regardless of industry that you're in, um, and um, uh, get that successful first. And it usually starts, for our from our standpoint, regardless of industry, with a line of business driven um, uh, initiative. So better service my customers or do a better job of, of capturing prospects or better predictive and proactive maintenance or you know better you know better job of, of processing my healthcare data whatever it might be it's line of business driven to create a single analytic application exploiting this new kind of data you know to, to, to use your term data first to you know to exploit this new kind of data in that application so the line of business drives that but then it, it can expand very quickly in a bunch of different directions. So talk about Microsoft. They had an event today in San Francisco, which I missed. Jeff Kelly went to, I believe you went. Uh, so it was a great event today. Um, I thought you have probably 10 times, maybe at least. So it was, <laughs> it was, it was great from that, from that perspective. Um, did they call you guys out specifically? We, uh, we did actually. Kevin Turner mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, Hortonworks a couple of times in his, uh, in his piece of the, the presentation, which was great. So we appreciate that. Um, it's a great relationship with Microsoft, one that we've had for uh, over two years now. So around uh, uh, February, March of uh, uh, announced that. Um, started off in to from Linux to Windows, um, and then finally expanded where they have now products in market that are built on the Hortonworks data platform. So we've worked with them collaboratively on those initiatives to help them bring products to market. We also work with them on the Stinger initiative. Uh, Microsoft was very involved in the Stinger Initiative, more than 6,000 hours of engineering time contributed to uh, uh, to that project. They helped both with things like the query planner inside of Hive, SQL Server engineers, deep expertise in query planning, working on Hive in an open source project, right? Just not necessarily the relationship or things you'd expect, um, which were quite uh, uh, satisfying and, and really great to see in the community, um, as well as things like helping with uh, the ORC, the optimized row column file format, so improving the compression, the on-disk compression, and the ability to read and process those files. So really, they're very, very involved in open source. I think it's kind of eye-opening. Hadoop's one of the one one of the areas that they are particularly involved in, one that we have a great uh, partnership with. Yeah, uh, you know, having been at that event, I thought it was I thought it was a good event. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think from from my perspective, I, I did expect a little bit more from. Uh, Satya Nadella in terms of uh, kind of the larger vision. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it was a solid vision. Mm -hmm. um, they talk about the platform and how they have the you know, the tools and technologies that kind of span the, you know, from the infrastructure mm -hmm. and Hadoop up through the analytics and yeah. visualization. Uh, but I was hoping for him to kind of, you know, inflame my imagination a little bit yeah. more. That was kind of what I was looking for from, from Nadella, from a CEO mm -hmm. uh, of Microsoft, as they're trying to transition in this world. I mean, obviously they've got this huge legacy business. Yeah. Um, and I think from a practical standpoint, it's smart. They're trying to kind of use their, you know, install base to mm -hmm. kind of infuse big data into uh, their customer base mm -hmm. through things like Office and, right. and uh, SQL Server and other things. I think that's a smart, practical move. Right. I was hoping for a little bit more, you know, get me a little bit more fired yeah, up yeah. about the possibilities. Yeah. Um, you know, I think some of the demos they did were, were solid and practical, mm -hmm. but not really kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, was it big data washing in your opinion, or was it legit? No, I don't think it was big data washing. But I think yeah. what I think what this I think what the industry needs from players like Microsoft, from IBM, from SAP is is really big vision. Mm -hmm. um, you don't think that they had that in terms of like the ambient intelligence? Yeah. I did talk a little, I'd there say was, they yeah. intro on it a little. It, it, felt, a little it felt manufactured thought leadership to me. When I read the buzzwords, ambient, come on, 
insights, right? Come on. I thought there was I mean, a little bit, he started insights. off with- It sounded like they were groping for some thought leadership. That was my opinion of I, reading the post. I think he- I wasn't there. I think he scratched the surface. I think mm -hmm. they can do a lot more. Yeah. And, um, you know, having had Satya on the queue before, I know, you know, we know he's a smart guy with a really great vision. Right. Um, you know, and it's, 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 this happens in steps. It's not going to happen all at once. But, mm -hmm. you know, I am looking for them to show a little bit more of a grander vision mm -hmm. about not just the platform, the technology, can do with it. Right. But they were really correct in your opinion. Oh, absolutely. They, they, were, not, they were not way off. They're not off no, base. No, no, no. Yeah, I think yeah. the, They're on track. I think the platform strategy and messaging is right on. Mm -hmm. I just want to hear a little bit more larger vision um, and less about, oh, you know, we're going to make Excel a little bit more effective, but mm -hmm. how, tell me how you're going to build new applications and mm -hmm. do new things with this data because really that's what it's about, about big data is about, yeah. you know, enabling new lines of business, really disrupting existing mm -hmm. you know, markets. Um, you know, I'm being, being a little hard on them, but I think... Um, well, I think you had a good point. I mean, one of the things I noticed with Microsoft, and this is includes for our, other, our friends at EMC, to all the big companies, is um, developers want trust. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft's earning trust, you guys mentioned some of those announcements, with mm -hmm. if they didn't do that, I mean, people would still be skeptical. Could people look at, you know, even if it gets a lot of skeptics, oh, they got my data, look at the Nest thing that blew up in their face, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. trust is huge right. in open source. Um, there's a lot of land grabbing going on, a lot of data washing, or so. So trust is a huge thing. Open source. This is not new to open source, mm -hmm. is it? Um, the trust, trust, and transparency. Yeah, no, I think that's it's core for the success of any Hadoop or sorry, any open source project. Um, and generally speaking, to have and establish that trust, trust the community, trust the enterprise, uh, trust with the ecosystem. Just generally speaking, so. Um, I mean, I, I do think that uh, the Microsoft is establishing that and continue to work on it. I know at least in their interactions with us, mm -hmm. you know, we see that kind of being very open and honest and, and wanting to contribute on these kinds of activities. So, uh, you know, I think it is, it is broadly speaking, you're right, John, uh, something that has to be established. I think, I think Microsoft, to stay on topic, is one that one is mm -hmm. establishing their trust in this, in this area. They're working towards it. Um, I want to switch gears just a little bit. I mean, still now kind of switching more to the competitive landscape. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get your take on a move from a competitor to Pivotal. Okay. Uh, that they you know, announced, I think, just last week or maybe the week before, that they're now essentially giving away their, their Hadoop distribution, Pivotal HD, yeah. and support for free. Yeah. So obviously they're putting price pressure by giving away for free on mm -hmm. the rest of the vendors in the market. What was your take on that? And did, what, does that have an impact on, on your approach? I mean, what does, yeah. it, what does it mean for, for Hortworx if anything? We don't really see Pivotal very much, I'll say. So uh, not really much pressure if you don't see them. Um, secondly, I think they're probably just embedding that, that support cost into mm -hmm. some of the other products. I mean, they're, gonna, they're doing a complete platform sale and they don't really value Hadoop. They don't really contribute much, if anything, to Hadoop. So, you know, from from them, they're trying to sell you all of the application stack and all right. the other components. They're gonna they're gonna get their pound of flesh, one mm -hmm. way or the other. So, I don't really believe you mean from their free. install. You mean from their install base? I mean from or the install from base, or from the from the from the big data bundle or whatever it was that they called it. There, you know, there is going to be some embedded cost because, you know, there's there's expense in supporting a platform. I mean, they're not going to do. Talk it about Horton Works for a second. Where are you guys now? I know you're still hiring. You're still busting out your parking problems in uh, Palo <laughs> yeah, Alto. Yeah. You know, I drive by every day. Valet like, parking. It's got, impossible. It's like yeah. You got a big building and not enough parking spots. But <laughs> give us an update on the hiring situation, staff, yeah. etc. Also, you got a hundred million in fresh funding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Horton Works is doing great. Um, we had, uh, you know, we're continuing to hire fast. We added, uh, you know, uh, 240 customers last year. We got 250. Um, and, and, and continuing to grow in terms of customer, had a great Q1 and just continuing to hire at a very, very fast rate. Um, there's 25 or 30 people in the new hire class going on this week, so it's really, really uh, great. And that's partially just really because of the momentum and the interest we're seeing both from, you know, through our partners and with our partners and then just directly with the enterprises. So, you know, from our standpoint, uh, we're extremely happy and excited with the momentum. I think, you know, 2014 is the, the year that we see things going from kind of just POC to a lot, a lot of production with Hadoop. So a lot of enterprises are really looking to move things into and take those applications to the next level. And you know they start small, but really when they get going, they grow quite fast. Yeah, when Rob Bearden comes on the queue, we'd love to talk about some of the business models, especially Dave Vellante loves to get into the, to the business side of it around subscription revenue. Mm -hmm. um, that is a discipline. And we asked the folks at Red Hat the same question. We asked the president and the CEO, how do you stay disciplined to that, that business model? Because mm -hmm. You know, you could you could risk taking some of that heroin and get addicted mm -hmm. to a meth, whatever, you want, whatever drug you want to drug of choice. Take, drug of, drug okay. of choice. It's a little late in the day. Here on the cube. Yeah. You take the little bit. Or what? You go outside of the discipline. You can really mm -hmm. 
get yourself in a bad position. So yeah. talk about your business model. Where are you guys? It's, you have a subscription, you have some professional service, yeah. but are you guys still on track on that business model? Give us a quick update. Um, yeah, we, the short answer is yes. We're still on track, still focusing on having a subscription support business. Um, training and services are um, still a minor part of the business, still an important part, um, and we prefer to push as much of that to our uh, partners system integrators and others as possible. So why would someone want to buy a subscription service that you guys are selling? Just mm -hmm. walk us through the customer use case because you know sure. a lot of people, I mean, it's similar to, is it similar to Red Hat almost directly? Yeah. Is it like, hey, I, I want support yeah. on Hadoop? Yeah. Explain that. Yeah, that's basically further. the case. I mean, if it's, it's data infrastructure. So once you build an application which you're using to drive, you know, either analyze a critical piece of your business or drive a critical piece of your business in some form or fashion operationally, um, you're going to want to have support on that, right? That's the kind of premise around having a 100% open source model. We don't need to create lock-in. The platform is of the value that organizations will want to have that subscription support, and that's proven out to be true. Like we haven't needed to change or modify our model um, uh, in any way, and we'll continue to go get down that path. So. It's, uh, it, you know, it's, it was the original premise, one of the original premises for the company, and it continues to be true today. I, you know, I give Horton Mercer a lot of credit. They are, they are sticking to their guns. They haven't wavered at all in terms of business. We model. try to knock them around too. We try to, you know, we try to rattle them, but they just won't be rattled. So tough, <laughs> tough interviewing, but we're, uh, we're sticking to our guns. <laughs> yeah, you guys are hard to rattle, hard to knock down. We we'll go to the twelfth round if we have to. Um, <laughs> We'll you, be there. you guys are doing a good job. You guys have been very good on open. It's been fun to watch the rise of, of Hortonworks when you guys came into the market. It, it's, it's a short history. No. It seems like yesterday does. And uh, Not even three years old yet. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Well, you know, it comes back down to the discipline, and you guys yeah. have experience with open source. You know, we've talked yeah. to the management team over there. Yeah. You guys get the business, yeah. and uh, it really is, I don't want to say arms race, but you got to continue to focus on getting the code out sure. there, get the contribution, and have some sure. tech geeks to do that. Yeah. Um, anything new from Portmore's coming around the corner? What's around the corner that you could share that's off the straight and narrow of, the, of your current execution? Um, you know, I think we just believe very strongly in our model and are going to stick to our guns. I don't think there's sort of anything necessarily to, uh, to, to talk about going forward. We just announced our 2.1 product at uh, Hadoop Summit two weeks ago. I think uh, a great place where you guys will obviously be is Hadoop Summit in San Jose um, in June. So, you know, definitely we look, we're going to look forward to having you guys there as always. I think it's a great place and a great venue to learn more about it. I'm sure we'll have some announcements at that that will be uh, talking with you at that time, but you know, that's a, that's a great venue yeah, for mean, anybody who wants to learn more about and it. And certainly the funding market is really hot still, the venture yeah. capital is still in the enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, um, a lot of innovation left on the, uh, yeah. a lot of fruit to be certainly coming off that tree soon. I mean, yeah. it's a lot, lot, more, lot of legs there. Don't you yeah, think? It's tons of innovation going on in the, in the um, community. I mean, you've got these things like Storm and other kind of open source projects, which are you know, just still coming into the platform and making even more things happen, right? You've got the, Yarn is still um, new to the platform, so there's still many, many kind of innovations and integrations that are happening with Yarn, and I think that's one of the things you'll see is lots of new applications being created, lots of new workloads being supported, all on that same platform. You know, we talk all the time, um, privately and publicly, about the bubble. Mm -hmm. Especially living in Palo Alto, you kind of firsthand exposed to a lot of the frothiness, but if you look at the development market as a, as a bellwether, and if you look at like the first dot-com bubble, mm -hmm. there was a lot of hype, a lot of PowerPoint slides getting funded. Yeah. Um, and obviously that burst for all the reasons, but still yeah. all those companies ended up becoming features anyway with the web. Yeah. So, but it's, what's different now about this innovation cycle or bubble is that certainly mm -hmm. ridiculous valuations on the consumer side. Yeah. But the enterprise side with the convergence into the consumerization of IT yeah. really has a lot of meat on the bone. I still think there's years left yeah. on this current run in yeah, my yeah. opinion. I would agree, I think that it's, it's being driven again by the data, to get back in one of the early things we talked about, and data growth is not stopping, right? There's, there's so much data coming from all the devices and all the different places that, uh, that are generating data. That's an opportunity for enterprises to better address their customers, provide better service, you know, do predictive maintenance. All of those workloads are highly valuable to the enterprise. Therefore, they're not going to stop investing in technologies like Hadoop and, and, and others. You know, we were talking, to, I was talking to a one-on-one -on -one interview with uh, Gil Albets from Factual, mm -hmm. who is a, who's an inventor of AdSense from Google. Mm -hmm. He's been working for years now on this platform uh, around getting location data. Mm -hmm. We were talking and I said, what do you think about the big data market? And he kind of, you know, rolls his eyes on our normal cube commentary yeah. kind of way. Oh yeah, there's little data, fast data, kind of the normal things that we would say. Yeah. And then he made a comment that I, that I found very interesting. He said, there's two types of companies. 
there's companies that are full of data, or mm -hmm. data full, mm -hmm. and people who make infrastructure and software for those companies mm -hmm. that aren't data full, they're data vacuums, they suck the data in. So it brings up the point of this whole other classification of, mm -hmm. If you believe that the data tsunami is coming, like you just said, and we're yeah. just at the beginning of it, yeah. people will be full yeah. of data. That's going to present interesting engineering and yeah. opportunities. Yeah. So as people become data full, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be a whole nother ball game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's a, it's, a very, it's a very interesting analogy. I would say we see that kind of thing happening within companies, I and mean, that's what they say. We don't have a way to capture, we've been looking for a way, I'll say, to capture and process this data, and that's one of the things that Hadoop provides them, but because it's streaming in and spilling in, I mean, right, the, the term that you you guys, I'm sure, have used and we've heard is data exhaust, right? That, that data was just falling on the floor. It wasn't being, um, now suddenly, you can actually, though, you know, that would imply your data full. If you were throwing it away before, but now you want to capture it, yeah. you'd yeah. sort of It's like, it's like you know, the, the guy who just gets so fat and big yeah. because he got so much, and it's like, yeah. uh, so my final question should be this, so if you believe that Red Hat and all these companies are on the next uh, edge of the next generation operating system, mm -hmm. yep. for the enterprise, for the world, for service, yep. distributed operating system in the cloud, on premise, all, all new software architecture with virtualization containers, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Yep. If that's happening at such a large mega scale, and with the validation of the funding that you guys are getting and, yep. and the industry's getting in the data space, yep. What inning are we in in data? I mean, how early is it was is this funding validation original anthem of data, or is it, <laughs> are we even pre-gaming at this point? Yeah. I mean, because that is a massive innovation yeah. Yeah. space that's going to have to come very quickly. What, what's your take on that? I'd say we're we're no later than the probably top of the first. I mean, we're definitely early on in terms of the technologies, the innovations. We may and have heard the anthem and opportunities, right? I mean, just exactly for. You know, because, you know, Hadoop as a technology has a long way to go. All these technologies can continue to evolve and just figure out new ways to exploit what they have. So, uh, okay. Well, John Kreisa, Vice President of Strategic Marketing here at Hortonworks, give a quick plug. I'll give you the final word uh, about Hadoop Summit coming yes, up. Give us some quick you. dates and what we expect to hear yep, so the event. June 3rd through 5th, San Jose. Obviously, our friends from theCUBE will be there. Definitely, if you are interested in hearing the latest of what's happening in Hadoop, both from the technology standpoint, the ecosystem, Standpoint and from the customer standpoint, over 120 sessions this year, bigger and better than ever. Um, look forward to seeing everybody there and seeing you guys there as well. Okay, that's uh, John Chrysler with Hortonworks. This is theCUBE. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back after this short break.